designing the battery system. So you see here that we have a battery catalog table on the, on the right side. It has the values of typical uh, maximum depth of discharge for batteries and efficiency of batteries and the C rate based on battery type. So a typical dip cycle lead acid battery has 50% depth of discharge. These values are also based on typical battery types that we have included here. If you want to use a battery type and you know these information from the spec sheets provided by the manufacturer, you could simply put those battery types here and input the numbers here based on the spec sheet. So when you come to design the battery system, you could use the one that you have in mind. So let's, uh, let's see here. The first table here asks us about days of autonomy. This is number of days that the battery system is going to supply electricity for all the needs without having a generation. If it's a very dark cloudy day, your generation is likely not to be sufficient to charge the battery. Or if anything is wrong with the generation system and it's not recharging the batteries, the batteries have capacity equal to days of autonomy to supply electricity for your system. So this is a very significant variable because the more days of autonomy significantly increases the number of batteries and storage capacity you need in your system that increases your capital cost and storage space you need i'm going to put two days of autonomy meaning that if generation side is shut down i need my loads to run for two days and then i'm going to use a battery type here these types of batteries are the ones mentioned in the table here I'm going to use a lithium ion battery. Uh, let's say I found a battery that has two volts and 1000 amp hours. I'm going to use that type of battery and I put the values here. Uh, I don't want to go through the specifics of battery if I don't have the, the data. Uh, so I keep these values as suggested by the system for a typical lithium ion battery. So the next thing I see in this table is the total number of batteries I need for my design and it's actually in an uh, arrangement suggested by the system. The system tells me that I need to have 24 batteries per string and three parallel strings attached together so that I have a total 72 batteries in my storage unit and it's going to provide 3000 amp hours as mentioned here and here for my system. However, you should see that your requirement for storage capacity is only 2000 amp hours. So I can actually play with the number of parallel strings to see within a reasonable range, can I have a, a good design so that I could minimize number of batteries required. Now let's see that I have a 5% tolerance margin here. Then with 5% tolerance margin, if I use only two parallel strings of batteries, I provide 2000 amp hours of storage capacity. While my system requires a little bit more 2083 amp hours, but it's okay because I have 5% tolerance margin. So if I have a different tolerance margin, let's say that I don't wanna risk by up to 5%, I wanna put it zero, you see this table turns red, meaning that your battery capacity is not really appropriate for this required capacity. So you could actually decide what is your tolerance margin. I'm gonna keep it at 5% throughout the toolkit. I think it's a reasonable number basically. Or you could change the battery type you're going to use if you wanna minimize the number of batteries you wanna use. Notice that just, you know, making this change a little bit like up to 83 amp hours less than required capacity by the system could reduce the number of batteries that system was suggesting from 72 to 48 batteries it's a significant saving in the capital investment required for this system so the batteries have a c rate value the explanation on many attributes related to the batteries are mentioned in gray boxes at the bottom. C rate is also explained in this box at the end of the explanations. 
uh, the C rate is basically the charge discharge rate that the battery could handle and is designed for. This is a value usually provided by manufacturers of the, the batteries, or you could use the typical values we have mentioned here. Uh, so it basically captures if the C rate at the maximum inverter rating is enough for batteries to work with. Basically, we want to make sure that your battery systems are not getting too much amperes that they are not capable to handle. If that was not a good design, then this cell turns red, meaning that you either need to change your battery arrangement, your battery type, or your inverter so that this amperes are in, within a range that batteries could handle. So now that everything is okay here and I know how many batteries of what type I need, I'm going to move on to the next tab, which is for designing the solar array system, the PV array and charge controller. The first tab here has information copied in from previous tabs. Uh, uh, the first thing I need to do is to put an efficiency value for panels. Usually it's a function of temperature and battery and panel type. You could probably find them in uh, general values uh, provided by manufacturers, or you could have a guess. If we're talking about tropical regions, it's up to 80% usually. So I'm going to put a value of 0.8 here. Uh, the next one is the efficiency of charge controller. It's usually based on the type of charge controller that you want to have in your system. I'm going to use an MPPT charge controller and the efficiency is suggested by the system to be 95. So I'm going to put 0.95. And again, if you have any, I, if you want to know what, what is the difference between MPPT and PWM charge controllers, there's these gray boxes here with information and links on these topics. You could find them at the bottom of the page. Uh, the next value, and basically these four values are based on the location that you want your system to be installed in. These are the values of solar radiation in the location that you want to set up your system in. So to get these values, we need to follow the steps in purple from A to E. First, we need to open Global Solar Atlas. The link is here. For the rest, you could easily follow the steps from A to E. This is Global Solar Atlas. You need to pick your location in the map or you could search for that location if you know that. Let's say that I want to design my system for somewhere here. Uh, so what I need here is a global tilted irradiation and optimum angle. It's the, the value of GTI optimum angle is 2453. Make sure you're using kilowatt hours per square meter for year values. It's the default values on the, of the website. I'm going to enter this value in the appropriate cell, 2453. It's going to be here, 2453 and it's kilowatt hour per square meter per year. So for the next values, next three values, I'm gonna open detail here, and then I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. I get to PV electricity and solar radiation section, click on DNI data, and then you see annual average for DNI, which is 2172 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. So I'm going to copy 2172 in the DNI here, uh, 2172. And then I go to the monthly averages here. I see the, the peak and the minimum. So the maximum and the minimum of the graph. So here, the highest monthly average, the highest DNI is 241.7. I'm gonna copy this value in the highest direct normal irradiation tab. And then the minimum is probably this value here, 149. So I'm going to put 149 in the lowest irradiation month. So now that I have this information, if I'm going to use any backup generation, so if I'm using a hybrid system, that means if I have a backup generation like a microhydro system or a diesel generator, that's going to supply part of the demand for electricity. 
I put the fraction of demand I need to meet with my solar PV system here. Let's say for the purpose of this example, I'm going to provide all the demand by the solar PV system. So I keep this value as one. And then I need to pick a, a solar panel. Every solar panel on the spec sheets provided by manufacturer or on the label behind the panel have some standard values mentioned on them. You need to copy the values as mentioned in this uh, label here into this table. So this is the panel I'm going to use in this example. 